because it looked good, but do it taste good? We about to find out. Oh. Even better than I was the yeah. last time, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. We back. I'm good. What's up, J Team? Welcome back to the channel. If you like Jonah J Team, all you gotta do is click subscribe. A couple of videos back, I said that I was gonna make my own crab ragoons. I think that's how you say it. Rangoons, ragoons. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Cream cheese and crab wrapped in a wonton wrapper, fried, uh, dipped in sweet and sour sauce. We're gonna be making our own sauce today too. Super excited because this is definitely one of my pregnancy cravings and I'm excited to be making it at home because I'm telling you, whenever you make it at home, it hit different. I've ordered these a lot and I've noticed that sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Sometimes it's not enough filling. I mean, come on, like, it's not enough filling in these. I like to taste the crab and the cream cheese. I like it to be packed. And sometimes the sauce is different too. So you don't really know what you're gonna get when you order from restaurants. Let's be real. Some restaurants are just not really consistent in making your food because you don't know who up in that kitchen. But in your own home, you know who up in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure to like this video for more cooking videos. Actually, right now, stop what you're doing. Comment below, what would you like to see me cook next? So comment below and let me know what you want me to make because I can make it. <laughs> You're gonna need cream cheese, obviously. Like so. And next you're gonna put in your crab meat. Now I did pick up some king crab and I was gonna boil it and crack it and get the meat up out of them shells. But for time purposes, I already have some real crab meat. Um, it's just like lump crab. You can also use imitation crab as well. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's crab meat, you're good. So I'm gonna pop that in. And you know what? I'm also going to just kind of like go through it a little bit because I wanna make sure all the shells are out. Some of the packaging says, you know, double check to make sure there's no shells and we don't want no shells. Next, add in your green onion your garlic, minced garlic. And I do have more of the ingredients off to the side just in case I feel like I need more like that garlic. Probably need some more garlic, so I'm probably gonna add some more of that. At this point, right now, I'm actually just gonna try to get this cream cheese kind of like mixed up just because that cream cheese really does need to get nice and soft. And I'm actually gonna use a whisk just to kind of get it all nice and together. This is probably gonna be the most time consuming right here, just cause you wanna make sure that it's completely mixed up. Between the silicone and the steel silver whisk, I like the, um, the silver ones. They're a little bit more like aggressive than these flimsy ones. Make sure that your cream cheese is room temperature. Like I said, mine wasn't cold but at the same time it wasn't room temperature that'll save you a lot of time this has to be mixed up really really well you don't want a clunk of cream cheese in your wonton look at this <laughs> oh lord get out get out so now i'm gonna add in my worcestershire <laughs> say what's the shirt what's the shirt what's the shirt like what's the shirt what's the shirt sauce What's the, what's the shirt? I'm gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. A little dab of that. Some salt. And some cayenne pepper, cause we gonna throw in some spice, okay? And some black pepper. We already added the garlic, so we don't need a garlic powder. But if you don't have minced garlic, then add in garlic powder. Um, should I do onion powder? No, don't need that, because we have green onion. I feel like some people believe just adding in layers and layers and layers of um, seasoning makes things taste good. And I mean, it does, but in some cases, it can start to overpower the star of the dish that you're cooking. So you just want to be mindful and 
just ask yourself a little bit of questions before getting seasoned happy. You just don't want it to overpower the star. Like when it comes down to steak, for me, whew, it's really the butter. But see, if you use salted butter, it means that you don't need too much salt. Like, I don't know. The girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't, okay? That's what I've been saying lately. Oh yeah, this is looking really, really nice. Really, really creamy. Okay, so, believe it or not, this is done. This is done, this is how easy it is. You don't need too much going on. It has the star ingredients in there. It's time to now start with our wonton wrappers. So putting that off to the side, we're going to get our wonton wrappers prepared. This is the brand. Um, my store just picked it up. You can make your own wonton wrappers if you want to. Go off, sis, go off. <laughs> so this is gonna be my station where I'm gonna create um the wontons what you need for your station to create these wontons is a scooper like this if you don't have this then just use a spoon and it does help every portion be equal which i guess we'll see if this amount of scoop is going to fit these wonton wrappers because you don't want your filling to explode out you don't want that you really want to seal them so we'll see and an egg if you don't have an egg for like an egg wash to put on the wonton wrappers, just use water. I make egg rolls a lot. You can use water, you don't have to use egg. And that's another thing, like that's why I love cooking. Oh my goodness. There's so many different ways to create things. Like it's not a wrong or right way. It's all about preference. Most likely not gonna use the whole egg for the serving amount that you're gonna use. So technically, if you want to save money and just wanna save your food, then you should use water. Play smarter, not harder. Get these wonton wrappers open. Y'all gonna make this easy? No? Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. A knife. We need a knife. Okay, so take your wonton. Let me see how thin these are. Okay, okay. That's what we're working with. Let's do one starting out. Cause we, we kind of need to fill this thing out. You know what I'm saying? We need to fill this thing out. I'm gonna use this brush. Just cover the whole thing. I don't think there's any harm in that. Some people have said that egg helps things stick better. I only disagree because I've made egg rolls and stuff like so many times with water and never had a problem. So that's just my thoughts. We're gonna scoop. Let's see, for the sake of a trial, Let's just see if there's so many ways to do this. Which way am I gonna do it? You bring it up and you pinch. Oh, this is definitely one way I have gotten the crab rangoons from a, um, a restaurant. We'll put this off to the side. I don't object to that. I don't, but I want to try to do the other one. I'll take a scoopy scoop. Then I'm going to put the egg wash on here. On the side. And I'm going to pinch these sides together. Oh no. Why are they slipping on me like this? Pinch this side together. Oh no. I think I put too much egg wash on here and then they come together like that. <laughs> Ugh, it's never the first set that looks good for me. It's never the first set. Okay, we're gonna be putting powder down because it's easier to fold when it's not like overwhelmed with a lot of egg wash, especially on my fingers. It's best that my fingers have powder on them. Okay, so starting over, a scoop, egg wash. Let's go light, let's go light. Now, take a corner, seal it. Take the other corner, seal it like this then bring together and seal it yes 
I knew it, man. I knew it. I'm going to sit you right here. You're going to be the inspiration. Now that I got the swing of it, it's, it's go time. It's go time. It's not about how you fall. It's about how you get up. So powder is the trick. I mean, honestly, I kind of should have known better, honestly. Over here talking about, I be making egg rolls and stuff. Once again, bring it together. Other side, bring it together. Seal it. And then squeeze, I don't know, the sides together. If that made any sense at all. I'm bad at directions. You just want to make sure it's sealed because you don't want it popping out. I'm going to put some more flour down. And I'm actually going to lay a few out in hopes that we can speed this process up. I will say it is important to make sure that your filling is like smack in the middle. I can tell whenever I fold them that they're not exactly in the middle. Where some people think it's a disadvantage for people with nails to cook and all that. In a way it is, but I don't think people understand how much of a skill it is for us to still be able to actually do this with nails. You know, like where is that credit at? <laughs> All right, y'all, so now it's time to make our sweet and sour sauce. It's like a dipping sauce for crab, rangoons. Some sauces have been very watery and some of them are thick. You can make it on the stove top or you can make it in a bowl. Today, we are making it in a bowl just because for the amount of rangoons, my husband doesn't even like crab rangoons. I will be the only one eating them. I don't need that much sauce, therefore I'm going to go the convenient route, which is making it in a bowl. So we're not gonna do the cornstarch and trying to get that texture or anything like that. And plus I'm all about making things simple and easy. I want everyone to feel like they can easily do this. Therefore we should probably go a simple route. By the way, the oil is getting nice and hot. This is brown sugar. I really want one of those like tiny whisks. I know they got some small ones. Now this is my first time ever making sweet and sour sauce. Um, to be honest, I didn't I didn't know that that was the dipping sauce for a uh, crab rangoon. So I am gonna mix it all together and then I'll pop it in the microwave and mix it and hopefully that breaks down the brown sugar. Oh, we could do this on the stove top, but like I said, we're trying to be very convenient and realistic. So ketchup is a major part of the ingredient. Rice vinegar is a major part of sweet and sour sauce. I am gonna kinda like taste as I go. If you don't have rice vinegar, use regular vinegar. That should work. Mix, 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 mix. Let's add some chili flakes. I don't know if y'all noticed, but this is actually um, red pepper flakes. To each is own, okay? To each is own. Ooh, it does look like it. It is giving. It is giving. Well, now it's time to taste it. Taste as you go, which I always say. Mmm. 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 Tastes good to me. It, 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 it tastes really, really good to me. It really does. Let's just leave it how it is because it does taste good. Sweet, it's tangy, sweet, sour, right? That's it. This oil looks like it is hot enough. Back in the day on my channel, to test if an oil was hot enough, I would put one drop of water in it and people still get me with that today. It's something that I do regret showing only because it is dangerous. You're not supposed to do it. Mama, blame my mama for it. I learned it from her. Now that I have a daughter, pregnant with a second child, now that I have a bigger platform, that's not how I'm going to test oil anymore. It just sucks that the video's up forever, so people are always gonna bring it up, but those of you that are new here and whatever, y'all are now seeing that Trinity has changed. Let's clap for that, okay? I understand, and I no longer do those things. To test hot oil, drop a little bit of flour in. If it bubbles up, it's ready. Or you can use a wooden spoon and if there's bubbles forming around the spoon, then it is ready. Those are two different ways to test if your oil is hot. Or you can use some type of thermometer or whatever and I'm sure that'll let you know. Oh, it's definitely good. It's definitely ready.
Let them get nice and brown. All right, y'all, as you can see, I'm sitting down. Your girl tired, so I'm sitting down. And you know what? Most of my tastings after cooking will probably be me sitting down. Let me give y'all a close up. This is what they're looking like. Each one has its own personality, we'll say, but they look good. I have my sweet and sour sauce right here, homemade. A good tip here, after you're done making your crab rangoons, make sure to let them sit. It's not good to eat them right after frying them. Pretty much, it's gonna burn your mouth. You wanna let it rest, let it chill for a little bit. So I cleaned up a little bit, rested, and now it's time to taste. Because it looked good, but do it taste good? We about to find out. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. Should I eat it without the sauce? You know what, let's go for it. Mm. Oh. This tastes so good. All right. Mm. Mm. This is so good. Ooh. The cayenne pepper, y'all. The cayenne pepper. Mm. Y'all probably noticed that I did forget to pray. But sometimes the flesh takes over. <laughs> Ooh. I'm a heathen. I'm a heathen. A sinner. A sinner. Going in for that bite. Mm. I'm starting to realize that whenever I ordered these, it's a lot of cream cheese. It's a lot of cream cheese, which isn't a problem. But sometimes it, it really does, when you make them yourself and you put the crab meat that you want the amount, you start to realize they really put a lot of cream cheese up in there. I will say like just that hint of heat, that spice from the uh, cayenne pepper, that's doing it for me. That's separating recipes right there. That's when you could kind of say, okay, these taste a little different than this. I don't think there's anything I want to change. I mean, my, my feeling, I can tell compared to the restaurants that I've ordered these from that their filling is also like on the sweeter side. For me, I'm okay with getting my sweetness from the sauce and not so much the um, the filling. So it's up to you, it's a preference thing. Mm. One more. Mm, 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 mm. Another thing you could add into the sweet and sour that I looked up after making it was pineapple juice. Next time I'm probably gonna do that cause I wanna know like, okay, what else can we do with this? Thank y'all so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy, of course, give me a like. Make sure, don't forget to comment below what would you like to see me make next in my kitchen, doing my thing. A big shout out to the J team. If you want to shout out like them, all you got to do is click subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and let me know below. And that's it. Make sure you be bold, brave, and beautiful. And I will talk to y'all in my next video. Bye.